Welcome to Plain English, the podcast that goes at the right speed for English language learners. Listen now and read the transcript online at plainenglish.com. Now, here's Jeff, your host for today's episode. Happy St. Patrick's Day. How a 5th century Catholic missionary became a worldwide symbol for a good party. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Plain English, the podcast that goes at the right speed for English learners. I'm Jeff, and today is Monday, March 19th, 2018. On today's program, we'll talk about the St. Patrick's Day holiday and how a celebration of Irish culture became such a worldwide event. At the end of the program, I'll show you how to use the phrasal verb scale back. Just a quick reminder, like always, that the transcript of today's program is available on the website. Today is episode 30, so just go to plainenglish.com slash 3030 to read along as you listen. And if you speak Spanish, Portuguese, French, or Chinese, the transcripts have instant translations that you can use to understand the tough words and phrases. In addition to the transcripts, I also send out by email a summary of each program along with links to the articles I use to prepare the show. If you want to get those emails, just go to plainenglish.com slash mail, M-A-I-L, and enter your details. Okay, time to get started on today's main topic. Saturday was St. Patrick's Day, a worldwide day to party and celebrate Irish heritage. How did the name of a Catholic missionary wind up being a symbol for drinking whiskey and beer, dancing, and dressing in green? Let's start with what St. Patrick's Day, or the Feast of St. Patrick, as it was originally known, is all about. St. Patrick was a Christian missionary who lived in the 5th century AD and is credited with bringing Christianity, and Catholicism in particular, to Ireland in the year 432, or more than 1,500 years ago. According to his own writings, he was kidnapped and taken to Ireland as a slave at age 16. He escaped and returned home to Britain, where he became a priest. Later in life, he returned to Ireland, bringing Catholicism with him, converting the Irish, and eventually rising to become a bishop. The Feast of St. Patrick was celebrated by the Irish in Europe as early as the 9th or 10th century, but became a church holiday in the 17th century, celebrated every March 17th, the date on which it is believed that St. Patrick died. It became an official public holiday in Ireland, only in 1903. Today, the holiday is observed in Ireland as both a celebration of Irish tradition and as a holy day of obligation for Roman Catholics. The rest of the world knows it more as a celebration of Irish culture. The most visible way to celebrate 
both inside and outside of Ireland, is through a parade. Parades usually include local politicians, police and firefighters, trade unions, school groups, bands, volunteers, civic groups, all types of organizations. And, of course, people wear green, the color that represents Catholics in Ireland. According to legend, St. Patrick used the three-leaved shamrock to explain the Holy Trinity to the Irish people when he first arrived. Official Ireland embraces the role St. Patrick's Day plays in boosting its image around the world. Government officials pack their bags and travel as cultural ambassadors, visiting cities around the world, promoting Ireland and Irish culture. The Irish Prime Minister has an annual meeting with the President of the United States, a rare, regular appointment for a world leader. And that points to such an interesting thing about St. Patrick's Day, that it really is a reflection of how much the Irish people have influenced the world, that a country of about five million people has inspired celebrations of its culture around the globe. Landmarks from the Empire State Building to the Eiffel Tower to the Great Wall of China are all lit up in green to celebrate Ireland. There have even been St. Patrick's Day celebrations in space. Ironically, it all began with a tragedy the famines in Ireland in the 1800s that caused over 2 million Irish people to flee to Britain and America. In all the places that Irish people wound up, they brought a celebration of their homeland with them every March 17th. Where I live in Chicago, we're so Irish that we have three St. Patrick's Day parades, the big one that goes through downtown and smaller ones on the south side and the northwest side, the historically Irish parts of the city. Chicago also dyes the river green, and our sports teams wear green jerseys for their St. Patrick's Day games. New York and Boston also have big St. Patty's Day celebrations. Unfortunately for some, the holiday has become an excuse for partying and drinking in excess in public. In fact, some cities and towns are canceling or scaling back their parades due to the disorderly conduct that usually goes along with the celebrations. These towns want the parades to focus more on Irish culture, music, and dance, and less on beer, whiskey, and intoxication. Before we get into the phrasal verb for today, I wanted to send a quick hi to Elizabeth from Monterrey, Mexico, She said she listens to the program in the car on her way to work, which is a great way to use that time in the morning or the afternoon. Thanks for listening, Elizabeth, and drive safely. If you want to connect with the show, you can find me on Facebook or Twitter under the username Plain English Pod, or you can send me an email directly. My address is jeff at plainenglish.com. Today's word is a phrasal verb, scale back. In the original context, I said that some cities and towns are scaling back 
they are St. Patrick's Day parades because they're starting to get out of hand. So some places want to make their parades smaller by restricting public alcohol consumption or reducing the street closures that accommodate large parades. You can use scale back when you want to reduce the size or intensity of something. Let me share a few more examples. I saw in the news that stock analysts are starting to scale back their predictions of how many new iPhone 10s that Apple would sell. These analysts initially predicted strong sales, but now they think that Apple won't sell as many as they initially thought. They're scaling back their forecast, meaning they're reducing their forecast. Some ski resorts in the United States have had to scale back their seasons this year because they haven't gotten enough snow. In your personal life, if you've been working a lot, you might want to scale back the hours you spend at the office. Or maybe you'll scale back your spending if you want to save more money. When I go on vacations, I tend to want to fill my days and nights with activities, and I sometimes come home more tired than when I left. For my next vacation, I need to scale back the number of activities and learn to relax a little. It's common to say you need to scale back your plans or a proposal if you think you need to reduce the size or scope of a project. That brings us to the end of today's episode. Remember that new episodes come out every Monday and Thursday morning, so click follow on Spotify or subscribe on Apple Podcasts or your podcast app to make sure you get every episode. Thanks for listening to Plain English, and we'll be back with another episode on Thursday.